than a preaching lecture series. I like to teach. And tonight we've got a subject that I think you're going to find very interesting. And I hope you'll pray as we proceed because we're going to be talking about that arch fiend and why is there evil in the world today? Dealing with the villain of Revelation. In fact, he's the villain of the whole Bible, better known as the devil. I don't know if you remember this notorious character from Medellin, Colombia. I did a series of meetings in Colombia, and uh, he was something of a hero there, Pablo Escobar. He was the largest drug dealer in history. And at one time, matter of fact, I've got a few amazing facts here. I, I don't want to forget them, so I'm going to read some of these things to you. At one time, he was believed to be the richest man in the world. He had back then $30 billion. By today's standards, it would have been over $50 billion. In the 80s, the demand was so high that at one point, Pablo Escobar and his Medellin cartel, selling mostly cocaine, was delivering 15 tons of cocaine to the U.S. each day. That's the equivalent of two African elephants of cocaine. During this uh, zenith of the drug trade, he was making $60 million a day in cocaine, uh, selling cocaine. In fact, I was reading that he had so much cash, he spent over $2,000, I think a month on rubber bands to bundle the cash. He had so much cash hoarded away in tropical barns that he figured he lost $2 million a year to rats that nibbled away and mold. Molding money. He owned 5,000 acres of land near a small Colombian town where he built a little utopia, 20-room mansion, where he'd invite, he'd just pay, and he'd have great musicians and people from around the world coming. He had his own bullring, his own zoo, with hippos, giraffes, and elephants. In all, it's said that he's responsible for approximately 4,000 deaths, including judges and a Colombian presidential candidate. But he was never satisfied with all that money and that power. He wanted to be loved by the people. He wanted to be the president of the country, if you can imagine that. And he started giving money to all these poor villages and for schools and public works. He couldn't spend his money fast enough. And they all loved him. They thought he was a hero. I mean, not all. Many people loved him. He ran for Congress and got elected. But he wasn't satisfied. He wanted more power. And he wanted more. And he wanted more. And when some of the other people in politics started to investigate him more carefully, um, he had them killed. And he had a saying... Do you want money, silver, or do you want bullets, lead? And uh, he gave everybody the choice. He says, I'll either pay you and you can cooperate and go along with me, or you're dead. And when judges began to investigate him or people were going to testify against him, suddenly they ended up dying. When someone else was running against him, uh, they were assassinated. And, and 4,000 murders. Wasn't happy. More, more, more. You know, it reminds us of the character that probably inspired people like Escobar, some of these individuals like Hitler and Stalin that just are, have an insatiable desire to be the greatest, to have more power, to have more money. And uh, reminds us about the origin of that arch fiend that we read about in the Bible. First question we're going to ask tonight is, with whom did sin originate? You know, Jesus came to save us from our sins. Why is there sin in the world? If God made everything good, why do we sin? Where did sin come from? People sometimes say, who had the first cold? Who had the first case of AIDS? Where do these things come from? It's like a mystery. Well, the Bible gives us these answers. You can read in Revelation 12, verse 9. It refers to him as that old serpent called the devil and Satan. And so here he is called the serpent. He's called the devil. He's called Satan. He's also called the dragon. And so Satan originated, believe it or not, not here on earth, but up in heaven. The Bible says the devil sinneth from the beginning. Sin originated with Satan. Satan is that arch fiend. He is very real. I believe that uh, not only does God send good angels to our meetings, I believe the devil tries to send representatives to distract and keep people from hearing the word. There are battles that are raging. Paul talks about us not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual forces of wickedness in high places. There is a God, there are good angels, and there is a devil. There is an evil power in the world. I think as you look at what's happened in history, you'd have to say that there is evil. You look at what some terrorists do, where they put a person in a cage and douse them with gasoline and videotape as they set them on fire. That is just incarnate evil. One of the reasons some people turn to God is they say, you know, I wasn't so sure about God, but when I became convinced that there was absolute evil, then I thought there must be good. There must be God. And we can certainly see the evidence for evil in the world. 
So what was Satan's name before he sinned? And where was he living at that time? Well, it surprises people to learn. You can read in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn to Isaiah now. Two of the principal passages in the Old Testament that tell us about the devil. You can find a little bit about him, of course, in Genesis, but he's not called by name. You go to Isaiah 14, and Isaiah begins with a prophecy about the king of Babylon. And then he transitions into the power behind that wicked king. And he says, how you have fallen from heaven. This is Rebel, I'm sorry, Isaiah 14, 12. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. The word Lucifer, it means light bearer. It's really a Latin word. In Hebrew, it's more like Helial. It means the morning star. How you are cut down to the ground who weakened the nations. For you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. You can tell that he had eye problems. I, I, I. You know, I've heard that um, people in mental institutions use the words, I, me, my, mine, and myself, five times more than people that are regarded as sane. Selfishness will make you crazy. And the very idea that the creature could rebel against the creator, to you and I it sounds insane. But somehow he thought he could have enough power to overthrow God. And don't forget, Lucifer was very powerful. But it goes on to say, Yet you will be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. And those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the one who made the earth tremble, who shook nations, who made the world as a wilderness? As a matter of fact, before I put my Bible down, let me go ahead and turn to Ezekiel chapter 28, and we're going to read verse 12. You can remember Isaiah 14, then you double that, and you go to Ezekiel 28, verse 12. Son of man, take up this lamentation against the king of Tyre and say to him. He starts out talking about the king of Tyre. Then he talks about the evil power behind the king. Now it's important to know that because you get to Revelation and it talks about the dragon wanting to devour the baby as soon as it's born. The Roman power, the devil, the dragon, through the Roman king, Herod, killed the babies in Bethlehem. Who do you think inspired Herod to do that? It's the devil. And so... These prophets are taken, they're shown these earthly kings that are persecuting God's people. Then the veil is pulled back and they're shown Lucifer, the power behind these kings. And it says here, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Uh, king of Tyre was not in the garden of Eden. Lucifer was. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the braille, the onyx, the jasper. He was beautifully adorned, the highest of God's angels. The sapphire, the turquoise, and the emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and your pipes. Those are beautiful instruments. He had a beautiful voice. Incredible musical talent. And the devil does use music. Was prepared for you on the day you were created. Not born. People are born. Adam was created. Angels are created. They're not born. So it's talking about a created being that was in the garden of God. You are the anointed cherub. Now is there any doubt who he's talking about? He was a cherub. He was a special chosen cherub. The one above all others. An angel. Who covers? I established you so. You are on the holy mountain of God. You walk back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. Notice this. <clears throat> you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. So did God make a devil? Every good and perfect gift is from God. Did God make a devil? Or did God make a beautiful angel decided to be a devil? How many of you have known families wonderful family, a good mother, good father, has several children, and one of them just turns into a wild child and can be evil. And you think, same family, good brothers and sisters, but this one made choices. And God is a good father. And you're probably thinking, well, maybe the Lord made a mistake, huh? Number three, what was the origin of Lucifer and what was his position? We're going to elaborate a little more on what I touched on. It says, you were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created until iniquity was found in you. The angels are the highest order of God. They are the ministering spirits of God. The Bible even says man is made lower than the angels. Lucifer was the highest of the angels. And if these are the ministering spirits of God, that means Lucifer may have been one of the earliest creations of God. The leader of the angels. Incredibly beautiful. Big. Powerful. Don't underestimate the power of the devil. At one point God released his protection from Job. And he told the devil, alright, I'm going to let you afflict him. And the Bible says the devil brought fire down from heaven. 
The devil sent a hurricane, a tornado to kill his children when the house collapsed. All these calamities came. Satan had incredible power over these forces. I don't want to glorify the power of the devil, but you need to also understand your enemy. And so just to be aware of these things. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. You were the anointed cherub who covers, the covering cherub. For so I established you. Some of you remember the story about the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant is a symbol for the throne of God. And there on the Ark, there were two creatures. What were they? <clears throat> Angels, cherubs. Well, two of them. They're called the covering cherubs. If you read in Isaiah chapter 6, it talks about the throne of God, and by the throne of God are these two seraphim, these two angels, and they cry, holy, 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 and they've got six wings, and with two wings they cover their face, and two they cover their feet, and two they, they fly, and there, the right and left hand position of God Almighty, most highly regarded position are these two angels. I don't know if you've ever noticed when the Pope sits on his throne, he has a throne there in St. Peter, every now and then he'll sit on his throne, that there are two angels on the right and the left. Have you ever seen that before? On the throne. That uh, harkens from that chapter there in the Bible where it talks about Isaiah. Lucifer had the highest position right at the right hand of God. And he fell. Now we don't know how long he was a good and a cooperative and a loving angel. And if you had known him back then, you would have loved him. Because everything God makes is good. The Bible says every good gift. If you want to know what God's intentions are, look in the Garden of Eden. When God made this world, every day when he creates something, what does he declare? He saw it was good. It was good, it was good, it was good, good, very good. It was a paradise. And do you think he had less going on in heaven? Everything God made was good. There was perfect harmony. How long did that last? I don't know. Lucifer might have been on the right track for millions of years. No way of knowing right now. But something happened. He became dissatisfied. He began to be jealous of the honor and the worship and adoration that Jesus received from the other creatures. Christ before his incarnation. And he wanted that position. And he began to resent that God was worshipped. He started to resent that God had rules and laws. He started thinking, we shouldn't, we're intelligent angels. We don't need God telling us what to do. I should be able to have that kind of power. Why can't I have the power to create? He may have resented when God was making the world. Because, you know, humans can procreate in their own image. We're made in the image of God. God creates in his own image. We create through an act of love in our own image. Angels can't do that. You know, Jesus said angels don't marry and they can't procreate. And so... He began to resent that he didn't have all the power of God. And he started to want the position of Christ. And he began to start a campaign to take that. 